and be trusting in Hashem. And it's, uh, it's called from stories and insights from the Briskarov, Rav Yitzchak Zev uh, who survived the, the Holocaust. He, I don't think he went through the camps, but he, he, he was in in Warsaw during the second beginning of the Second World War and he was the Rav of Brisk before the war and and then he he ended up in Yushalayim and he, he uh, all the Brisker Yeshivas that you know they count they come from him and from his descendants. Okay. Um, I'll begin, we're, we're learning about Avram Avinu. So just, the Pasuk says about Avram Avinu in the end of Parshas Lech Lecha by the Brisbane of Asarim that Hashem made a covenant with Avram Avinu I believe that's where it is and Hashem promised Avram Avinu that he was going to have children and it says, Behemin Ba'ashem He trusted in Hashem a Yachshu Be'alai Tzedaka So, the Chavz Chaim says that Chazal say about Avram Avinu that he recognized Hashem on his own. In other words, no one introduced him to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to the creator of the world. He himself saw that there must be a uh, first cause and some, some creator to this world. Even so, says the Yechavet Chaim, we find that the praise that Hashem gave to Avram Avinu was about his Amun on Hashem. Like the Pasuk says, Behemin Ba'ashem. So, this teaches us that the Iker HaYikarin Hi HaYamunah the Tzadik BeMunasa Yichya the greatest thing that a person can have is Amunah is trust in Hashem and there's a marshal he gives Le'echad Shetava Biyam Vira Eitz Lefanav so a person is in a raging river and he sees a a branch in front of him or a log that he could grab onto and he tries to grab dra- to uh to, to grab a hold of it and he tries to, to drag to, 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 to uh, grab not just on to the weak branches to the leaves to the something that won't hold won't be the the strongest part but he tries to gri- to, 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 to grab on to the strongest part of the tree in every generation throughout our Golos and it, this is what's kept Klai Yisrael going is the Amunah that you didn't have had uh, it could be great Torah luminaries it could be more simple uh, mothers and grandmothers and Pasha Yidin that this is what kept Klai Yisrael going is the Amunah in the Kodesh Baruch and I was looking for another Chavetz Chaim which I didn't find right now, but uh, he he brings the Chazal say about Sadikim that Tchilas and Yisurim is Saif on Shalva. In the beginning, their life is very difficult, but in the end, it's more tranquil. And that we find by all of the Avos, and he goes through each one of the Avos of Ram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, of all of the difficulties uh, that they that they experienced when they were younger, and until. Uh, until Avram Avinu and Yitzchak and Yaakov, towards the end of their life, they had some respite from it. And um, the point is that they need, a tzaddik needs to be talking because a person could think that, oh, look at this great tzaddik, everything goes smoothly for him. But it's not like that. Even very righteous people have have, uh, have many difficulties in their life, and and everyone needs. To have bitachon in Hakadosh Baruch So, uh, I'm going to tell different stories about the Brisker Rav today, and some of the insights that he said that he had. Um, based, most of them are explaining Pesukim and Tehillim that uh, anyone who reads Tehillim could immediately see how often the word Emuna bitachon are mentioned in Tehillim. How David Amelech, who was fleeing from his son Avshola and from many different battles that he had during his life, this is something that he lived with the Kodesh Baruch Hu. What is Bitochan? Bitochan means, in this context, in this context we're going to explain it more, but he doesn't worry, he's not worried because he knows he's in the hands of Hashem. And we'll give different sukkim in 
and tell him hopefully that will uh, it, it round out this this concept. The um, the pasuk says, "This anagal Hashem yitin l'cham mishalos libech." It's a pasuk in Tehillim, Lamed Zayin, uh, pasuk Dalid, and the, actually the pasuk beforehand and afterwards are also speaking about the bitacha. And if you listen for a second, you'll see um, very familiar pasukim to you. So pasuk says. Betach ba Hashem, betach meaning be by Teach, trust in Hashem, ba Seitoiv, and do good. Shchan Eretz Re'ei Amuna, and Re'ei means what you graze, what you live on. Your sustenance should be Amuna. This Anagal, now the next pasuk, this is the pasuk we just quoted. This Anagal Hashem, this Oneg, when you're familiar with the word Oneg, Oneg Shabbos, right? What does that mean? It means Oneg is take pleasure in Shabbos, right? So here it's not just saying about uh, this is what we're going to explain that his anagal Hashem means that he's taking pleasure in Hashem. Then he give you the the uh, requests of your heart. Okay, and then continues to speak about bitachon after this. So the Yavisker Rav said there's two types of people of b'tach and Hashem. You can have a person who's a b'tach and Hashem, but he's <coughs> he's still not at ease. That's, in other words, he says everything's going to be all right, everything's going to be all right, but he hasn't reached the level of oneg with Hashem. This is a higher level of emunah. The, the level where a person is, is has a relationship with the Kodesh Baruch Hu, that he's actually in a in a state of joy with the Kodesh Baruch Hu, even though he's going through so much. He knows he's with Hashem. So, um, now, the, what, what I found interesting about this was that um, there's a very interesting story about the Briskarov that uh, seems to stand in stark contrast to this idea. In other words, a person could look at this idea and say, hey, uh, really what this is saying is that have no worries, have no fears, and just, uh, just uh, everything's fine and dandy and no problems. But the Briskarov was in the, was, he found himself uh, in, he was in Eretz Israel during the times in the war in 1948 mm -hmm. and there was one time when there was a ceasefire and he was in Yushalayim and he decided that it would be safer for him to leave Yushalayim. So he's on the road outside of you, going with his family leaving Yushalayim, and um, he had been through so much, he lost his wife and some of his children, and in, uh, in they weren't able to come over with him. And uh, that's a story in itself, how they got visas, and it could be she stayed back to take care of her mother, it's not clear exactly, but she ended up not being able to make it. And the, the point is that the Briskarov had gone through a lot, and he now was in Eretz Yisrael, and he's on the road uh, leaving Yerushalayim, and he got detained, he got stopped by uh, different Arab troops that were there checking all of the, uh, all of the uh, wagons or where the, the buses or trucks that were leaving Yerushalayim. And uh, what they were doing is that they were, they were getting ready for another round of a battle and they were checking every single uh, car and every vehicle to see if there were any weapons in it. And they were being detained for some time and it looked like maybe they would get, uh, maybe they would get arrested, maybe they would be taken captive. And it was, it was uh, a time of great danger. During this time, the Briskarov was, was speaking out loud to himself and he was, say, he was doing something very strange. He was, he was going through, he was speaking out all of the possibilities of very grave and serious possibilities of what, what could happen to them if they would get taken by the Arabs. And you can imagine that could not be uh, very comfortable for them. And so his son asked him, what, what's going on? You know, 
aren't you supposed to have bitachon in Hashem? Wouldn't it be better if you don't consider all these terrible uh, considerations? And and he said, I understand the mitzvah of bitachon doesn't mean to be oblivious to all of the uh, uh, to the realities of what could happen. A person should be aware of what what could transpire, and yet nevertheless, with all that in mind, even so, have trust in Hashem. And therefore, I want to be aware of, <laughs> this is fascinating, I want, this is what the Rishka said on himself, that I want to be aware of what the reality of the danger that, that, that is being posed to us at this time, and still, nevertheless, be b'teach in Hashem. And he explained there's a Pasuk and Dylan that um, that expresses this. Let me see if I can find it. I think I wrote it down over there. So the Pasuk says, Yoim Ira, Ani Eilecha Evtach. So Barak Nunvav, Kapitol Nunvav Pasuk Dalit. And after one becomes aware of the situation and it's dangerous, Yoim Ira, on the day that I have Yira, Ani Eilecha Evtach, Ani Eilecha I trust to you, an eftach to elecha towards you to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. And um, so, on the this is a a very interesting balance over here, because on the one hand he's saying that a person is supposed to be living with a joy, with a oineg, it's anag al Hashem, and at the same time he's saying he's very aware uh, uh, of the dangers. So can so so but can I suggest that? Yeah that when the danger passed, however it passed, whatever happened the next day, two days later, he can then go back and say, look at Hashem saved me from all these things, and he had a list of all the things he could be grateful to Kodesh Baruch Hu for. You're sure. You're saying he he list of all afterwards his, his Akar Satov was even greater because he realized what it was that Hashem saved him from. Yeah. That's very nice. The, the, one of the lessons that the Briskarov wanted to bring home to us was that the idea of bitachon, it's true, yitin l'cha Hashem, yitin l'cha m'shal sibecha. If a person has bitachon, then Hashem will answer his requests, and Hashem will give him his, his needs. But it's not, the, the point that he wanted to make was that if bitachon isn't just a, a means to an end, and tefillah, it's not just a way to get what we want, and if we trust in Hashem, then Hashem will take care of us. So be, the best Therefore, we need bitachon to get what we need, to our, our needs to be taken care of. But he said that actually um, it's something which it, it brings a person to a tremendous closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that we should never trade in. And he had a situation uh, where, and maybe it's easy to say this, but uh, it was a man of truth, so I guess we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take it as if it really happened, but it was just something that he actually just said. He had a kolel, and uh, this was after he came to Yishalayim, and he funded the kolel, and, and uh, there came a, a time when uh, he, he, um, he needed to make payroll, and actually, according to the book, he never missed the payroll. He always made it on time, and he paid, uh, he mo- paid monthly. So, on Rosh Chodesh. So anyway, the story goes, that he took out a loan to pay to pay up what was his you know he was in charge it was his responsibility to pay and and uh, it was coming it was the time to pay I think it was that day or the day before and he didn't know yet where the money was going to come from so he decided that he, he knew somebody to give him a loan to, and somebody commented at that time wouldn't it be wonderful if he would get a donation for his for the colo of a large donation of a certain amount of money, and then he'd have nothing to worry about, and he wouldn't have to go through these um, means. Maybe it was humiliating, and that he would have to ask for a loan. And he responded, "For that amount of money, I wouldn't sell my mitzvah bitachin." In other words, you're right. I would have nothing to worry about. I wouldn't even have to look towards Hashem. And it wouldn't be worth it for me. It's worth it for me that I don't know where it's coming from, and I know that Hashem will provide. Will, will come from uh, Hakadosh Baruch will provide uh, for sure. He would have a karsa type to whoever who is a generous benefactor that would help uh, provide for their kolo. But 
The point is that he wasn't, he didn't look at this as like a negative situation that he didn't know where the help was coming from because that was just a mitzvah of bitachan. And here's a story that actually happened. Now, I'm speaking about levels that uh, I'm not on this level, but um, I'll explain to you maybe where maybe with the balance that we could have after the, after the story. But the came um, Chodesh and somebody approached the Briskara and said that uh, I don't know uh, uh, did you pay the Avrechem uh, yet? So he said no, I didn't pay them yet. So he said here is the amount of money that you need to pay that a certain amount of Avrechem is how much you pay them. Here, I guess he knew the inside story he said he has, he has money he wanted to provide. So the Briskarov said that he's not going to take it. So he said, why not? Why are you going to take it? Today's the day to pay. He said, actually, I already have the money to pay them. I don't need it. So he said, what do you mean? That there's going to be a Bez Hashem. The call is not closing down today. There's another month coming ahead. And why don't you take the money today and you'll have it for next month? <coughs> so the Briskarov said, I don't need it. Right now, I have what I need for, to pay them for today. I don't need it. So, he didn't take it. The next month, the fellow came back, and this Tabriskarov didn't know, didn't have a way of knowing that he was going to do this because he didn't make any promises. He came back, and that time he came very early in the morning to, to see, to, to, uh, to, to pay him. So, so the, um, what's the point? The point is... He took the money the next month. The next month he took it because he didn't have the money yet. But um, the the Gemara Masechus Saita Daf Memches tells us about different things that were great in, in earlier generations and then were lost, ended, ended an era of such greatness. And one of the things it says is that's on the base. Okay, the Mishnah is on Nemchesim and Aleph, and so it says on the Mishnah, the Mesech is Saita of Nemchesim and Aleph. Says Misha, Chare Beis Hamikdash. When the Beis Hamikdash was destroyed, it's not in the beginning; it's in the middle of the Mishnah. Bottle the Shamir was was uh, was no longer. Shamir was this type of worm that cut stone, that cut the stones for the base of Mikdash. Uh, the Neifas Tzufin, I think that refers to the uh, flow, the Neifas Tzufin from Parashat Gemara, I think it refers to the special brachas that the, um, the land was flowing with honey, I'm not sure, but the one I want to focus on, Uposku Anshi Amana in Yisrael. The uh, Anshi Amana, the people with Amuna, with great Amuna and Hashem, were, were, were ended from Klal Yisrael, from that generation. Shenemar, and then it brings the Pasuk and Tillin. Hashia Hashem ki gamar chosid. Gamar means could, be, could, could mean finished. Zalemach says, Hashem save us because there's no more chosid. The Pasuk says, ki fasu emunem ibn Adam. Okay? So the, the, emun, the emunem ibn Adam, those are great emunah, there was an end to that era. Now, What's the example? So the Gemara brings, uh, the Gemara brings here this Memches on the base towards the bottom. Um, okay. Amr Rabbi Yitzchak. Eilu b'nei Adam she'im aminim b'kodesh baruch hu. These were the people that had great amunah in Hashem. Titania Rabbi Yitzchak called the Oimer. Call me. She'yesh lai. Pas b'salai. Anyone who has bread in his basket. The Oimer. What will I eat tomorrow? So it means he today he has for his, in his he has bread in his basket for him to eat today. And he says, What will I eat tomorrow? Ainailamiktaniamana. So he's from Kitani Amana, this is the expression we found in last week's Parsha Parsha's Nayak, Miktani Amana. I heard Zayel talking about it earlier, about uh, Nayak waiting to go into the Teva until it started raining. But anyway, uh, 
Mikdani Amunah means it's a lower level, it's not the great le- highest level of Amunah. It's can be like washing cotton, a smallness. Okay. Now Rashi explains that these great people at Amunah and Baruch Hu, what did they do based on their Amunah? So, the Levater Mimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimimim
to his own efforts, and he was the, the paradigm for us for our 2,000 years. Everyone today has a matching person in those 2,000 years, I wonder. I don't know. But what, I, what I'm, I'm just saying this in relationship to the, what we see that in the base of Mikdash they had this great Amuna, and, it's, and that was something that they were, and they had Nevua, and they had Amuna, and they had Nisim, and they, what they had was something much greater than what we have available to us. But it's just that, we're, which Hashem purposely, so to speak, gave us, that He wants us to initiate and bring back and to work too hard and to go through all of the gullahs to bring this uh, to have the bitachan during the darkness and that's going and to, to in other words the nisyanis that we go through that Ram Avina went through and that we go through are something that brings out our true colors it's going to we have to reach into the resources of our own se- self and bring out that bitachan and and that's where we find ourselves. So, so okay. So, uh, we, I don't want it to be depressing to us. That's part of why I brought this Gemara and Saita. Um, that we see that on one hand, somebody's called Ketani Amana for saying, "What am I going to eat tomorrow?" And on the other hand, we see that the Gemara, the Mishnah says that it was Pascha on Amana, that this was finished, that they didn't have this level anymore. So, the um, this is something that we're supposed to strive towards, but we can't fool ourselves and think that we're on the highest level of the Amuna before we're actually there. And uh, last year we learned Beis Alevi, selected uh, essays on the parasha from the Beis Alevi, and one of the ideas I believe that we learned from the Beis Alevi was that the uh, balance between Bitochain uh, and uh, Tishtablus, and where a person finds himself on their own level, that's how that's the balance. And the Beis Alevi said, if I remember correctly, that the balance is that the goal is to have bitachon in Hashem. The hishtadlus that we do should be in the amount that we we won't be worried anymore. In other words, if you have a person who's who's uh, not on such a high level, right? He's an average person. You can have an average person who's on, you can have a person of Yid who's on a very, who has tremendous faith in Hashem. But you have a person who he lives in this world, he doesn't live with Derek Nase, right? He looks at around, and he, if he doesn't uh, do such normal Ishtadlus, then he's going to be very worried. So he has to do that Ishtadlus. Because Hashem doesn't want him to live in fear and live in worry and. and Hashem wants him to be able to, like it says, this Hashem. So, you know, but, talking. but if you have a person who's working on his emuna and he gets to a level where he doesn't need to do so much because he he's so close to Hashem that he could be at ease with Hashem like the briskarav was, without having to know, without knowing he has bread in his in his basket today. Where's my food going to come from tomorrow? He's not worried. He's not worried. What? I can bring tomorrow some more stuff. Yeah. The Rizki Rav said that he once told his son. He told his son they didn't have a minion, right? Okay. I'm sure there was thousands of stories, but they they selected which ones they want to say here. But it's bringing out a point. That the the point was that a person has to do establish even the brisket rabbis do ishtadlus, <coughs> but, um, but he wanted to say that the ishtadlus, the, the, uh, the, the efforts that a person puts in, isn't the natural cause and effect, like that you think that what you do is going to provide for you. So they, they were, had a minion in his house, and they needed a tenth man, and, or maybe a ninth man, an eighth man, whatever, they needed to complete the minion, and the time, the close, getting close to the time, and instead of just waiting for the people to come, he sent his son out to the street to go look for somebody else to come in to join the minion. And he said to his son, as he's, go, uh, as he's going out, he said, don't think that you, by going out now, that you're going to make the minion. <laughs> because you look in one direction, 
and the help from Hashem comes in a different direction. And the son said, that's what happened. He's calling out, you know, on the, he goes over to the corner or whatever, calling, tenth man, whatever, and from the other side, that's where the person came from. But the brisker said, but that doesn't mean you don't have to go out and do it. You have to go out and try. But you have to know that it's, in the end of the day, it's really Hashem who's doing it. But nevertheless, you have the responsibility that you have to go and make the effort and show that you care and that and you can't just be samich on an ace. So you have to do, you have to, you have to do the, you put in the effort. But not to think that you are the one who, through your great, uh, let's say, a person has a business. It, it, it's some things are easier to to uh, to see this than others. But um, you know, uh, I'm saying certain professions look very, very much cause and effect, and some. There are opportunities that come up. They come from left field. They come from that a person could see very clearly. They could call it mazel. They could call it whatever. But the fact that they have a customer now or a client or who knows what, that's, that they know that wasn't necessarily, uh, maybe they had to advertise, but what, did, what their, their advertising was what brought it in, they, not necessarily. It's a pasuk in the Yoke. It says that if a man, wherever the path that a man goes, First work will probably take them Yeah. The Darab Shadam writes a letter, I think maybe, maybe that. Yeah, and so, so yeah, that's the concept of what you're saying. The Tachem, the, the Hishtadilis, is just showing the direction. Uh -huh. Showing to Kurdish work. I'm making the effort to do the work, Kurdish uh work. -huh. So it's not, it's not the actual Tachem. It's the Hishtadilis, it is the message to Kurdish work. Interesting. Yeah. I heard from. Uh, yeah. Uh, Yogi yeah. Bear, excuse me, but I heard it from him. Yeah. The I'm baseball sure, player. I'm sure it's from <laughs> Jewish stuff. He says very, very um, philosophical, very deep. If you listen, look into it, he says when you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> That's what he's saying too. Yeah. Okay, well, you have to think deeper into that one. Well, God, but I mean, that's in the Chumash, when God says, Questions are, he says, at some point you're going to think that by the strength of your hand that you uh. did it, and it, but it wasn't a strength. It, you have to know that it came from God. You know, right. That's, that's it exactly that right. Thing, right. Yeah. I actually even saw, maybe it was in one of these books about the Biskarov, that he said that the, the Pasuk that you're referring to, maybe there's several Pasukim, but one of them actually is very strange because. It's the way it describes it, that it says you're going to think that you but it, it speaks about a situation where they, they came and they found vineyards that were already planted and houses that were already built. And he says, what do you mean that, that's already built? How can you think that you did this? How can you think that you made this? And he says, but the Torah is teaching you that even in such a situation, still a person could come to thinking that, oh, it was my, you know, I'm a very lucky guy, or like, you know, uh, uh, I'm, you know, I always have good mazel, or who knows what, that this is why I was the one who chanced upon this, and doesn't start thinking that it's a gift from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Even when it's clearly, like, that he didn't build it, and he didn't, and it was, it was no special kishroiness about him and uh, his talents that brought it about. Um, so, there, there's a, <coughs> there's an interesting story um, uh, so, so what I'm saying is you could say that the Hishtadlis maybe is a way of showing Hashem what your interest is maybe from the Beis Alevi it sounds like it's a way of putting yourself at ease that together with your level of Bitochen and, and uh, you also have a responsibility to make sure that you know it's not just a total miracle and maybe it's part of the uh, a world that Hashem put us into after the chait with Adam and Chava and the Nachash that Hashem says you have to put in effort but they have to, you have to sweat, you have to try hard and and they have to put in effort it still comes off from right, right, but at the same time to still realize that it's this is a klala, this is an obligation and nevertheless it comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. but it's 100% and it totally comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. right even, even if not in the case of Spanish, you, you try to work out a business and it works out fine, it's not in an office where you're in a desperate straits and you might, doesn't know what to eat. But Islam 
somebody who was successful in business, it's also, it's not 20, 80, or 70, 30, it's also 100%. Uh -huh. so. Right. It's, um, but it's a big Nisaya for us to constantly grow in. It's something that we could grow in always in Bitachan. To, to uh, continuously see Hashem and thank Hashem for, the, for our Hatzlachais or if a person's in a time of need, in a time of turning to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to ask Him uh, to see us through something and realizing that this situation where we are dependent on HaKadosh Baruch Hu isn't a bidiyevet. This is something which is, uh, is something which is an opportunity for us to come to Bitachain and come to this relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, just like we had by the Avais that HaKadosh Baruch Hu uh, made uh, the Imai Sakaris and they had to wait for a long time and this HaKadosh Baruch Hu said that he it wasn't by accident that Kodesh Baruch Hu gave them this way of coming close to him to, uh, to be constantly turning to him and beseeching him for, for them to be able to have children. So, um, there, there's many stories, but um, the, their, um, the, the Briskarov was in Warsaw uh, in the time when there was, they were being bombed by uh, the Germans who were coming to try to to uh, take over Poland, and when they got to Warsaw, they met a lot of resistance, and then they decided that instead of just going on ground, then they're going to come in with the Air Force, and they were, and they were striking civilian buildings all over, and it was a tremendous bahala upheaval, and people were, were, were terif terrified and nervous, and, and the Briskarov at that time was one of the times where he determined that there was whatever there was to do, they had done, there was nothing else for them to do if they, they, know, they had no knowledge of where the, where the bombing was going to be. And he, he decided it's just as fine for him to stay where he is. There's no... Uh, and, and he um, wasn't in his own home. He was a guest because he wasn't from Warsaw, but that's where he had gone. And, and uh, his host asked him at this time, he said, you're known uh, w that... Uh, he said... W maybe he knew the brisk grub. he said, I know you didn't always uh, sleep the most soundly, maybe you're, uh, uh, and, and now, these nights, it seems like you're sleeping very peacefully. And nobody can sleep, and you're sleeping very peacefully. What's going on? And he said, David HaMelech said it in Tehillim. David HaMelech says in Tehillim, it's, it's it says that Pastor, it's a capital about being bevarchad and nevshalan, and he's uh, being chased. And it says in the pasuk, I lay down to rest and I slept. I kitzaisi, I woke up. Ki Hashem yismecheni, because Hashem, uh, Hashem supported me. And so he said, David Melech is in a time. It's a time of tremendous danger. And what did he do? He went to sleep at night. And he slept peacefully, and he says, "Shachavti uh, vayshana." I fell asleep, and uh, and uh, that's that's why that's why he said. They said you're a nervous person. We know that you're usually very you're you're, you're always thinking about the different possibilities. He said, "Yet yeah, that is because it's our responsibility to do the safest thing upon us, and I want to make sure that I'm assessing the situation properly." But once I realize this is totally out of our hands, then there's nothing for me to worry about. Because there's nothing in my ball, there's nothing that's my responsibility to do. There's nothing I can do. So I'm just in the hands of Hashem. So that's why, that's why I'm at peace. Uh, at night, I'm able to sleep. And um, the, the uh, Zilna guy said, on the, there's a pastor in Tehillim, that says that a person, uh, David HaMelech, said that he is like a, a, like a baby uh, that nurses from his mother. I put myself in tra the, quieted myself like a so the, the uh, and there's a yo it's brought from the, the only guy that they asked him to describe Bitachin and he said that uh, when a baby nurses from its mother, after it eats, the baby's feel full, uh, satisfied, nothing, uh, very happy, 
and content. And if the baby doesn't say, hey, wait a second, where's my next meal going to come from? He doesn't think, he's not worried about that. My mother provided for me, and I'm happy. And he doesn't like, in other words, this is a very a simplistic thing. Like, a baby doesn't look past its nose. It's just like, it has what it needs, and it's in its mother's hands, and there's no worry. And that's what the the the, 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 uh, the only guy explained uh, what Bitochan looks like. So I just want to end off with um, with the um, with the the uh, the Viskarov said that uh, from the Shara Bitochan and Chavos Olavavos and Akdamat the Shara Bitochan that he just explains that Bitochan is something which is more valuable than all the wealth in the world that all the wealth in the world a person could uh, could d- could feel a sense of security. He has money, he has power, he has what to, but it could be taken away from him. He could lose it. It's not, it's not uh, necessarily there forever. But a person who has bitachan in Hashem, that can never be taken away from him. And there was a story about the Briskarov that um, he got, uh, his father-in-law gave him when he, wa- when, uh, when he got married as a dowry to, he could be able to sit and learn and and uh, grow in Torah, so he gave him, uh, says, uh, he maybe must have been a wealthy man, he gave him a block of apartments in Warsaw. And that he, the idea was that he would own these apartments, he rented them out, and he, uh, he had an income from that that was a steady income, and he, he didn't have anything to worry about. Well, he had nothing to worry about until the uh, tenants didn't pay the property tax that they had to pay. And the government said to the Briskarov that unless that the, these are your, your, you're responsible for these people and they have to pay the taxes. So you have to hand them over to us. You have to hand over these people and tell us who it is that didn't pay the taxes. Because otherwise we're taking the, the apartments from you. And he, he decided that it is not much for him to be most of these people to the to the government who didn't pay the taxes, and the the apartment buildings got taken away. They, they got taken away from him. And during those times, uh, he was stu- he, he would study this, the Chovas uh, Olavos Shar a lot. He would spend time studying that. And he commented to somebody during that time. He said, "The world thinks that a rich man is somebody with a block of apartments in Warsaw, but a." The truth is that a rich man is the one, somebody has Shar Bitachan, has Chavit Allah Shar Bitachan, that's a rich man. And, uh, you know, that's how so I'd like to end with that, because Baruch Hashem and Baruch us, that we should be able to look up to our predecessors, Maisa Basim and Labanim, and uh, look up and say, Masai Yagiyah Maisa Lamasai Avaisai, that we should re- reach the uh, levels of Bitachan and Muna that Klaisa throughout the Dairais is what kept us going.